Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode 60 of Be With Me. We are in the book of 1 Corinthians, and today we're going to start with chapter 14. And the call is to earnestly desire spiritually gift, spiritual gifts. Now, gifts are, are that which is given for the common good to the whole, to the whole church. They represent appointments of God, the activity, the presence of God on our earth, with an emphasis of the priority of people, and it describes this characteristic of God where he arranges and he empowers with effect, and he apportions his spirit to the people of God and manifests himself. He makes himself known. So this is a great thing, and he's going to say to earnestly desire it. I think the the contrast would be is, hey, I don't want any of the spiritual gifts in me or in others. I don't want God's presence. I don't want his manifestation. Uh, I don't want his call in teaching or in prophecy. I want to hinder this communication of God so that I can keep going my own way. Um, I don't want to do the hard things of like the last chapter you did, chapter 13, the love hap- love chapter, and all those hard bearings of bearing up of other people and bearing up under circumstances. I don't want to engage in the difficult internal spiritual work that is part of being a Christian. And I don't want to be a part of the body as a whole. And I, don't, I certainly don't want to associate with the people there. So that would be the the bad way of approaching this chapter. So let's not do that. Here we go. This is in chapter 14. Let's do it in a good way and earnestly desire what it talks about, which is uh, going to be a prophecy, which we'll talk about. Verse, chapter 14, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men, but to God, for no one understands him, and he utters mysteries in the spirit. On the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding and encouragement and consolation. The one who speaks in a tongue builds himself up, but the one who builds the one who prophesies builds up the church. Now I want you all to speak in tongues, but even more to prophecy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets so that the church may be built up. Now, brothers, I, if I come to you speaking in tongues, how will I benefit you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? Even if lifeless instruments, such as the flute or harp, do not give distinct notes, how will anyone know what is played? And if the bugle gives an indistinct sound, who will get ready for the battle? So with yourselves, if with your tongue you utter speech that is not intelligible, how will anyone know what is said? For you will be speaking into the air. There are doubtless many different languages in the world, and none is without meaning. But if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker a foreigner to me. So here, last verse. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. So let's talk about prophecy for a second. So prophecy is a spontaneous spirit-guided revelation that is delivered verbally and intelligibly. It has the ability to be tested. It's basically taking something inside the soul of the speaker and putting it into speech, and then it can be tested by others. So some say that uh, it equals preaching, that is the proclamation of scripture. And some say that it's not teaching and it's something that's spontaneous and outside the realm of teaching. I I favor uh, more of a uh, combination, which is, that is, it is a sudden thought brought to a prepared mind. That is, it is, so you've heard preachers that say, hey, I prepared this and then this came to mind. I think prophecy, in a sense, is utilized within teaching Uh, And it's these sudden thoughts that come to the prepared mind of a teacher. All right, but here's the things about prophecy that is so beneficial. It it speaks to people, it upbuilds, it consoles, it builds up the church. Um, The church is better for it. It benefits by bringing this revelation and knowledge and teaching in a distinct, noble, noted way, as opposed to tongues which is uh, nobody understands it, even the speaker doesn't understand it, and uh, the speaker is built up by uttering these mysteries somehow in the spirit. 
uh, it can be interpreted, and in that way it could build up the church, but that uh, may not, there may not be someone there who has that gift. So uh, then it's a personal gift, not a gift to the church. Verse 12 says that with yourselves, since you are eager for the manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. And that's what I want to talk about as the as the, the gist of this. So you see in this passage, Paul's love for the church. Well, where did he get it? Well, God has this, this incredible love for the church. And I love this, that we are supposed to be earnestly desiring. We want to see you, God. And so we, therefore, we want to see these gifts used well because you're manifesting yourself in these gifts. And we want to see you not just sort of in theory. We want to see you here. And we want to see you now. And how do we want to see you? Well, we want to see you in the way that the, the, these words, the manifestations of these words are given in our preacher, in our uh, preacher, in our prophesier. We want your thoughts among us. So I think that this passage about the heart of the listener here, it says, verse 14, verse 1 says, pursue love. That's chapter 13. Golly, that's hard enough. And then it says, desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Why? Because it's building up the community. It's building up the body. It's consoling people. It's encouraging people. So I love the idea is we're supposed to be desiring these things because the desire for these spiritual gifts is really the desire for God. And and the when part of it is the now part, the here and now. Lord, we want, to, we want you not just out there in theory. We want you here in our presence, in our speakers, in our hearts. We don't want to resist you. We want to welcome you. Thanks for listening.